Steve, let's talk TVs. And just like buses, in 2023, we've waited ages and now three come along at once. Um, firstly, why is that? Basically, almost all the TV manufacturers, particularly the big ones, they tend to release their new models around about the same time. They usually announce them in late February, early March. They start hitting the stores usually in around April, sometimes May. Um, and the review samples all go, go out around the end of March, beginning of April. They usually all turn up at the same time. There's usually multiple samples for multiple manufacturers who want multiple reviews yesterday. So it's, it's a bit of a, a nightmare if, you, if you're a TV reviewer sometimes. Um, but uh, the good thing is by having multiple different manufacturers' models, particularly their flagship models turning up at the same time, you do get a chance to compare and contrast, which, uh, which is very useful, particularly if in some years, there's bigger differences than others. I mean, there have been certainly years where the new model, apart from the change in the model number, the differences are minimal uh, and it's just like, you know, just minor tweaks. But this year, there's quite a big difference between this generation and last year's generation on a lot of these TVs. So it makes for um, some interesting uh, comparisons. So you and John Archer have reviewed three significant new models with some new technology in them over the last few weeks. Uh, two from Samsung, one from LG. And I know that John says in his review that the LG could be the best TV to launch this year, which uh, we're only in April. So that sounds quite exciting. But let's look at the two Samsung models first. So, Steve, tell me about the 65-inch, £3,700-ish Samsung QN95C. Yeah, this is uh, Samsung's flagship 4K TV for, for this year. It's an LCD panel with an LED backlight, and that backlight is composed of lots of tiny little LEDs. Uh, in fact, there are 1,400, um, just under 1,400 LEDs behind the panel, which um, is, is nearly double what was on last year's flagship model. So big increase in terms of the backlight. Um, and that means more zones, which means more precision, which means better contrast, deeper blacks, and a better overall performance in terms of um, peak peak highlights as well. So that's a, that's a big difference. I mean, otherwise the TV is not wildly dissimilar from last year. Um, it has a similar, very similar design, um, uh, a bezel-less screen, very attractive TV actually, uh, very thin and uh, a nice solid metal stand. One of the interesting things this year is that it does not have the One Connect box, which it did have last year. So the One Connect box is basically a, a box that the TV comes with and you connect everything into that, like you know HDMI or whatever it is. That goes into the box and you plug that box into uh, the wall socket. And then there's a single cable that goes from the box to the TV, which makes wall mounting an absolute dream because you've only got to deal with one little cable. And that brings everything, picture, sound, power, the lot into the TV. Now that's been dropped on the QN95C this year. Uh, if you ask Samsung why, they'll say, you know, well, various, they'll give you some, some, you know, some flannel. Basically, I suspect it's a cost factor. Um, you know, there was an obvious cost associated with this box. If they weren't getting enough benefit from it in terms of marketing and sales, then I guess that's why they've dropped it. It's a shame because I love it. I think it's a great idea. I'm surprised no other manufacturer has copied it. And as I say, it makes installation really easy. So that's a shame, um, but the current TV itself is identical. So you still get four HDMI inputs, all of which support uh, for HDMI 2.1, which is uh, important to note because only Samsung and LG actually do have four HDMI inputs that are HDMI 2.1. All the other manufacturers have two that are 2.0 and two that are 2.1. So that gives both LG and Samsung a competitive advantage, I think. If you're a, a big gamer, for example, and you have two consoles and you want HDMI 2.1, but also you need to connect uh, you know, a soundbar, which means you use one of the other connections. So it's an important factor. Um, in terms of uh, other, other, other features, uh, it's large, let's say largely the same as last year. So you've got the AI enhanced neural network processing, which has been tweaked. I believe it's got 20 neural networks now, um, which improves the processing and upscaling. Uh, you've also got uh, what's called Object Tracking Sound Plus, which is a 4.2.2 uh, channel sound system. So there are literally speakers at the top and bottom of the panel, as well as bass drivers built into the rear. Now, given that it's a fairly slim panel, it's incredible they can fit that in there, um, but they have, and it actually, surprisingly, sounds quite good, which is um, something you can't often say about uh, TVs these days. 
Uh, it also supports Dolby Atmos, so you get um, a degree of immersion. No, not same as a soundbar, but you will get a degree of immersion from the TV. And it's got the Tizen Smart Platform, which again is really good. Very comprehensive, every streaming service you can think of. So overall, it's, uh, it's a very strong contender. Thank you very much for that, Steve. And I will drop the link to that review underneath this video. But you've also reviewed the S95C Quantum Dot OLED. So, Steve, tell us about that one. This is a Quantum Dot OLED, which is essentially uh, a relatively new type of OLED technology. It was introduced by Samsung last year. And that, this uses uh, a blue OLED across the whole panel and then quantum dot filters to create the red and green aspects of the, uh, the sub-pixels within each pixel. So you get a red, green, and blue um, sub-pixel, and then uh, obviously those pixels combine to make up the overall image. The idea behind it is that you get purer colors because you've got red, green, and blue, and also you get more brightness. And this is a second gener generation panel, so actually the brightness has been significantly increased by up to 40% over last year's S95B. So um, the S95C has the new panel. It is a lot brighter. I measured it at 1,400 nits on a 10% window and 2,700, sorry, 274 nits on uh, a full, full field image. Uh, that's a significant increase for an OLED. And, um, and not just that, but also uh, it does come, unlike the QN95C, with the One Connect box. So this, this TV looks amazing in the flesh because it's, literally just 10 millimeters a centimeter from top to bottom unbelievably thin panel when you wall mount that it looks incredible plus you've only got one cable to deal with it does also come with a really nice uh all metal stand uh it, it's a stunner it's a really stunning tv even before you turn it on as soon as you turn it on you're like wow this this is notably brighter than previous oleds um with some really nice colors uh, again as with the uh the qn95c pretty much everything else is the same you know you've got the ai enhanced processing you got the Object Tracking Sound Plus 4.2.2 sound system. Again, how the hell Samsung have managed to fit any speakers into a TV that's only a centimetre deep from top to bottom is beyond me. The fact it doesn't sound like it actually sounds passably good is remarkable, given all of that. Uh, you also got the Titan Smart Platform. Something I forgot to mention on the QA95C, which is also applicable to this TV, is that there's a new feature, well, not new, they did introduce it last year, but it's a feature called Smart Calibration. And you can actually use your mobile phone to calibrate the TV. Um, and it's, it actually works. It's, it's, it's pretty good. It gets it in the ballpark. Although I have to say, out-of-the-box accuracy on these TVs is phenomenal. I mean, it's um, the visible threshold for errors is usually referred to as being about three, uh, if you talk to a professional calibrator. Um, most of these TVs are now delivering visible thresholds um, sorry, vis uh, errors below the visible threshold, so less than three, some 1.3, 1.4, something like that, uh, which basically means that you're probably not going to get much of a benefit out of actually getting it professionally calibrated, which is bad news for calibrators, but good news for punters, I guess. Um, yeah, it's it's. I've got to say, John's comments about the G3, very you know, very punchy coming out there, saying it might be the best TV of the year. I'd say it's got its work cut out comparing to the uh, S95C because. This is also a really good TV that delivers some stunning uh, HDR and SDR. Plus also, uh, it's got a new filter this year. So one of the complaints about last year's S95B was that in rooms with a lot of ambient light, the filter made the blacks look a bit dark gray. Uh, that's not the case this year. So um, it's one of the features that uh, that, uh, that Samsung's definitely addressed since uh, since last year. I think, I think it's a cracking TV. Not cheap. I mean, I'm not saying it's not... <laughs> None of these TVs are cheap. These are all flagship models. But uh, for, th for three and a half grand, it's, uh, it's definitely uh, worth considering. And with the new filter and the increased brightness, does that make for better daytime viewing? Um, and, and I ask that, not that I'm much of a daytime viewer of TV, but something that's always annoyed me in the past is watching a movie on a summer evening and having to close the curtains to get the best out of the movie. Um, and then you're kind of losing the best of the summer weather. And uh, So with the combined brightness and the new filter, is watching movies on a summer evening without shutting the house up going to be a thing? Definitely. Uh, this is a TV that will hold its own in a room with a lot of ambient light and still look very good. Obviously, if you want to get the very best out of an OLED, particularly with those deep blacks and all that shadow detail in a darkened room or watching at night, you're going you're gonna to really get the full benefits. But uh, 
you can watch these TVs, both the S95, sorry, yes, the S95C and the G3 uh, in daytime and still get a really punchy picture. So uh, don't worry if you want to watch a movie in the, in the evening, particularly in the summer evenings when it's still broad daylight, uh, these, this TV uh, I can deliver the goods. Thank you very much. And I will drop the link to uh, your written review also below this uh, video. So now it's time to take a look at a TV which John Archer in his review has said could possibly be one of the best of the year or even the best TV of the year. And it's only April when we're recording this. So we are going to take a look at it with Steve Withers. It is the LG 65 OLED G3. Steve, tell us all about it. Yes, well, not that I'm going to question John's you know, undeniable wisdom when it comes to TVs. This is an absolutely spectacular television, no question about it. The, uh, the LG G3, their new flagship model for this year, takes what's called WRGB OLED, which is the technology that uh, LG have been uh, developing for more than a decade, um, takes it to a whole new level by adding what's called a micro lens array, MLA. Essentially, it's focusing the light from the pixels more precisely, so you're getting a, a much brighter performance. Uh, this TV can hit 1,400 nits on a 10% window, and around 250 nits on a, on a full field image. So very bright for an OLED, very bright. I mean, not as bright as an LCD TV, obviously, but when you're talking about OLED, this is in incredibly bright. It's also delivering a very accurate picture, a, a very um, beautiful colors, uh, fantastic processing. It, it is an absolutely cracking TV. Uh, John thinks it might be the best of the year. I wouldn't question that necessarily, although I will say that uh, if you compare it directly with the Samsung S95C, you know, there are strengths and weaknesses for both TVs. They use slightly different or very different OLED approaches, but they deliver very similar levels of performance, particularly in terms of their brightness. They're basically about the same in terms of peak brightness on a 10% window. And the Samsung has a slight edge in terms of a full field image, but they're very close in that sense. So after that, you're talking about, you know, design differences. Um, that's one area where, the G3, uh, it's a hundred pounds cheaper than the Samsung, but the G3 is designed to be wall mounted. So it comes with a wall mount, but doesn't come with a stand. So if you want to put it on a stand, the stand is optional and that's an extra hundred quid. Uh, the Samsung comes with a stand, but not a wall mount. So depending on, on your priorities, uh, they could be the same price if you're going to go for stand mounting. Um, I will say that the one advantage that the Samsung has, in my opinion, is that because it uses the one connect box and you have a single cable to connect to the panel itself, if you are wall mounting it, it looks fantastic because there's only a centimeter deep from top to bottom. There's only one cable to worry about. Whereas if you're wall mounting um, the G3, then you know if you've, you've got a power cable and maybe up to four HDMI cables going into it, you know, a bit, bit harder to make that look tidy. Um, but it does look fantastic when wall mounted otherwise though. Uh, so, Slight differences there. I think audio-wise, I'd probably say I give the edge to um, the Samsung because of its 4.2.2 channel speaker system. But they're both, again, sound pretty good. And they are obviously, you know, they have the issue of both being incredibly thin TVs and therefore there's not much room for speakers. Um, I think that the Tizen smart platform on the Samsung is, is very good. I am personally a big fan of WebOS, which is what LG uses. I, I love the Magic Remote, which is, you know, like a pointer remote control. So I, I do find that um, that's my preference in terms of uh, smart platform, although both are comprehensive in terms of the streaming apps you can access. So uh, not much in it there. Uh, I think, uh, I think you know, John, John's gone out of the door a bit early there, I'd say, on the, on the best TV of the year. But uh, there's no question that uh, whether you go for the G3 or the S95C, they are both superb televisions that deliver fantastic HDR, beautiful pictures, um, you know, really incredible levels of image processing as well. So I don't think whichever one you go for, you're going to be disappointed. Thank you, Steve. And if you are feeling confused, because uh, there's so many new TVs out at the moment, if you're feeling confused about the plethora of options available to you and all the new tech um, that we have been describing on some of the reviews that uh, Steve's been doing today, 
There is a, a written guide. So John Archer has done a written 2023 guide to help you find the best TV for you. And I will put the link to that guide below this video and John's original written review of this particular TV as well. Mm -hmm.